What's up, YouTube? My name is Rob Guillory, and this is my YouTube channel. Thanks for tuning in. If you've never been before, the purpose of this channel is to encourage, inspire, and give insight into what can be sort of a crazy making industry. As always, I am talking about the comic book industry. So this week's episode is sort of a spicy episode, and not in that kind of cheesy, uh, outrage internet kind of way. It's just something I'm really passionate about. This episode, I will be telling a story from something that happened very early in my career that really shaped, uh, it was very formative to a certain aspect of my career, particularly when it comes to uh, how I relate to the reader. So I think that relationship is incredibly important. Uh, in, in recent years, it, that, that relationship has been kind of, uh, there's been a tension between the reader and the audience. So I kind of dig into that today. So I'm hoping it's going to be helpful to you guys, especially the creatives out there. I'm hoping it will be something that um, you can add to your tool belt. I think it's an important one. So let's dig into that. I'm going to be working on some commissions while, while we listen to that, and I'll check you on the other side. All right, so this week I'm going to share a story I've never shared before. It's something I've stewed on for years, but I've never spoken about publicly, probably because I was afraid it would possibly stir the pot. Uh, I'm just not a big fan of throwing uh, my private business out in public, as you guys know. But the reason I'm going to tell this story is because this experience really shaped how I view the relationship between creator and the audience. And I'm hoping it'll be helpful to you as you begin to navigate this relationship. The story I'm going to talk about happened over a decade ago. And frankly, I just I don't really think anyone involved will, will care if I share at this point. So I'm just going to roll with it. This story takes place in around 2011, 2012 which were really good years for me, and really good years for comics as a whole. Comics were experiencing a major creator-owned renaissance with books like Saga, Morning Glories, Manhattan Projects, and tons of other books just bursting onto the scene and doing really, really well. My Image comic, Chew, had been out for a couple years at this point. We won a few awards, been on a few bestsellers lists, and we'd also managed to option Chew to a big network for a live-action TV series. Now, for anyone who doesn't know, a Hollywood option is a, it, it's, it's when a network or a studio pays you a certain amount to have exclusive rights to produce a TV show based on your work. So the options are limited, which means that this network paid us a certain fee for a certain amount of time. In this case, uh, they would have two years to attempt to make a Chew TV show. And if they failed to make the show within that two years, the rights would then revert back to me and my co-creator, and we could re-option Chew at a whole other network which we've actually done half a dozen times or so since then. So at this point in 2011 or 2012, it seemed highly likely the Chew live action show was actually going to happen. Everything was finally lining up. We had the network behind us. The fans were behind us. We had a screenwriter attached who was passionate about Chew. And we had a script that was flat out amazing. It was funny and charming, but also brutal in the same way that the comic was. In other words, it looked like we were on our way to something special. And to top it off, my co-creator John and I were guests of honor at San Diego Comic-Con that year, hosting a packed panel where we held court with hundreds of fans. So we were on a cloud. It was good times. And then it happened. We got an email from the network that was basically the beginning of the end. The basic gist of the email was, we really like the shoe pilot script, but we don't think the audience is smart enough to handle it. The executives at the network just didn't believe the audience could handle this quirky little TV show that we created. And if you've never read it, Chu is the story of Tony Chu, a guy who gets psychic visions from what he eats. If he eats an apple, he sees the life of the apple. If he eats a hamburger, he sees the life of the cow, including the death and the awful processing of the cow into the burger. The premise of Chu was always two central pieces. First, there was the food psychic part. That was the hook. And then there was the backdrop, taking place in a world where an avian flu pandemic had killed millions, leading to the prohibition of poultry and the rise of the FDA as a sort of uh, homeland security. Really, that was always what the book was about. But now, almost two years into development, the network had decided the audience simply could not handle the food psychic hook and the global pandemic plot point. So what was their solution? They basically wanted to drop the avian flu plotline. 
They reasoned that the food psychic angle was really the only thing that mattered. And of course, we as, as the creators, we knew that they were wrong, but our hands were tied. So long story short, that one email killed the entire show. They attempted to make a version of the script without the avian flu plot point, but it fell completely flat. And honestly, I think the only person who was surprised by this was the executive who sent the email to begin with. So why am I bringing this up? Well, because this one interaction early in my career really shaped a big part of my career philosophy. It taught me a lot about what Hollywood is, which I will get into in future episodes. Uh, but after this interaction with Hollywood, I made a decision. I decided that no matter what I made, I never wanted to treat the audience like they're stupid. What killed the, Ch the Chew Show at this particular network were powerful people who simply did not believe the audience possessed the intelligence to understand our show. And for whatever reason, these executives believed that while they could understand the complexities of our story, the audience could not. And in my opinion, this was because they clearly had lost touch with the audience and frankly seemed to have a very low opinion of the audience. And that to me is pretty sad. And I think creatives can fall prey to this toxic mindset toward the reader, especially in comics. This idea that the reader is just some kind of low IQ person who doesn't know what they want. And really what they need is to, is to just be force fed something that they should want. And the reader should just go along with this and just show up with their money for stories that they don't, they don't want. And then when the reader doesn't show up, the creator's shocked. How could this have happened? I think this posture toward the audience is all wrong. I actually think it's very insulting. This mindset puts the creator on some kind of pedestal, with the reader as literally beneath them. And I disagree with that on every level. Listen, I've, I've been around a little bit. I've literally traveled the world, meeting thousands of readers over the course of the last 15 or so years. I've talked story with them. I've talked about what they like and they don't like. And you know what I've learned? I've learned that the average reader is pretty damn perceptive, especially when it comes to story. The average reader can recognize good story because they've been raised on story. Maybe they don't catch all the subtle symbolism we bake into our works of art, but I really think that they're way more intelligent than most corporations give them credit for. In fact, I think the average reader is so perceptive that they can sense when a story or a TV show is patronizing them or talking down to them, or when a work of art is flat out insulting them. They can feel it. People are pretty sharp, and they will, put, they will pick up what you put down on the page. So be, to be clear, I'm not making this video to complain or to shame anyone. I'm making it because I think we need to take another look at the relationship between audience and creator, especially in this current moment where creatives and their audiences often seem to be at odds with one another. If you're a creative, take a second to assess how you think about the people who will be consuming your work. Because I guarantee you that mindset will absolutely affect the work that you make. How you view the reader will affect the art that you make. How, the, how this particular network executive viewed the audience affected how we told Shu as a TV show. It made it a worse show. And I think this can be true in the stories that we, we tell in general. If you think the reader's beneath you, that will come across in the story. It will push the reader away. I really think we as creators need to stay ground level. We need to stay humble. We shouldn't be putting ourselves on any pedestals as if we are the chosen ones giving crumbs to the unwashed masses. That's a repulsive posture and no one wants to be around that. And no one wants to support that. Maybe I'm just idealistic, but I've always seen my role as a creator as not to be above my reader, but to be beside the reader sharing this thing I made with them. I've had the pleasure of knowing many of my readers for over a decade, even becoming friends with many of them. That creator-reader friendship is crucial, and it needs to be protected. We need each other in this system. Readers want good stories, and we as creators need the reader's support to tell these stories. This relationship has to be a two-way street built on mutual respect. That's all I'm saying. So think about it. Who is your audience? And what do, you what do you think about them? Because I think it matters. 
Of course, this is just my two cents, as always. So take it for what you will. You know me. I'm just a dude who draws comics for a living. All right, so that brings us to the end of another episode. I really hope that you got something from it, especially if you're a young creative. Um, that, as I said before, I am super passionate about this particular issue because I think everything sort of hinges on it. If you're a creative, you need the, you need your reader, you need your audience, and readers and the audience want cool stuff, and you're the you're the person to make it. But I think if you're making if you have a low opinion of the people you're making it for. I think inevitably it's going to bleed into the work that you make. And I think the audience is actually going to sense it. So, but again, I could be crazy. Let me know in the comments section. I want to hear from you. Uh, how are you with your audience? Do you think about your audience at all when you're making the stuff that you make? Uh, do you like your audience even? Because, I mean, frankly, some people don't like their audiences, which is a whole other thing. I I I probably won't talk about it in future, future podcasts because it's just so depressing. Uh, but let me know what's up. Hit me up in the comments section. Any way I can help you, any way I can serve you, I'm here for you. Like, share, subscribe. Uh, you know, if you can hit the notification bell, that would help you uh, keep in the loop. It will let you know whenever I drop a new episode. I drop new episodes every Tuesday morning about 8 or 9 a.m. Uh, but yeah, I want to hear from you. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. I hope you have a good week. Bye.